Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode I'm continuing from an idea that I had in the previous episode with the New Glenn rocket. And in that episode I noticed that the New Glenn had uh, little winglets, swings, uh, fins at the bottom here. Uh, it didn't used to have in the original design, they just had these at the top that were supposed to control the rocket on landing, right? It's a recoverable stage. It is a reusable stage that's supposed to land on a barge. But then they added these down here as well, which allows for the placement of a shuttle on top of the rocket instead of strapped to the side like the STS shuttle. I previously used the New Glenn rocket uh, for my new young shuttle, and that one was a more conventional shuttle with uh, strapped to the side of the New Glenn first stage uh, with two Falcon 9 first stage rockets as boosters. Um, but that had some drawbacks, and I was thinking of trying to make a lighter shuttle than that and place it on the top of this, now that we've got these fins at the bottom. Uh, it turned out that it's not as light as, as I was looking for. It's rather big. Uh, I've gone with OPT parts, configured by myself, uh, because they are the best for a lifting body sort of look, but this is not a pure lifting body right now. A pure lifting body does not have wings. I might eventually turn this into a pure lifting body because, of course, dumping the wings saves some mass if we can get away with it. But I'm not entirely sold on the idea that we can get away with it right now. So we are keeping the wings, and these were wings that I thought that the rocket could handle with the gimbling of the engines and the fins at the bottom. And uh, yeah, so this is what I figure will work. Basically, the shuttle is the second stage. Uh, we've still got two BE-3U engines, so still uh, from Blue Origin. And uh, it is using Hydrolox. Uh, this is a Hydrolox... Uh, well, that is a Hydrolox tank. This is a Hydrolox tank, too. Uh, we've got radiators. We've got... Uh, we've actually got a bit of a Hydrolox tank here, too, because I couldn't fit the contents of the second stage of the New Glenn rocket just with that area uh, volume. We've got seven minutes worth of burn time in total and then this is our payload. Right now it's just eight tons. I don't think that uh, this can carry the shuttle's 24 tons to orbit right now. We'll have to do some shuffling. Its dry mass is 39 tons and uh, yeah I, I mean overall it's fairly lightweight but still not as lightweight as I was really looking for. The forward part of this has a docking port arrangement already and fuel cells and fuel cell fuel here which shouldn't be used like for anything else really. Um, yeah, so that is there. I did put canards um, and that's just so that I can keep the wing further back and potentially put a body flap to protect the engine so I haven't done so yet. So that's uh, the canard will give me the flexibility to do that sort of thing. Uh, but otherwise, this is what it's looking like, and we will see how it works, if it works. So let's see if it flips out or not. I'm going to have KOS control it because it will be more precise about everything. And, well, here we go. Oh, it occurs to me that in the opening I said this is KSB 1.3.1. It's not. It's actually 1.2.2. And I managed to get the post-processing mod in here, even though it's only supposed to work in 1.3.1. I'm not entirely sure it's working exactly as it's supposed to, but I guess it's okay for now. It's, it seems okay. I should mention that I actually took all the textures from the OPT mod, brought it into Photoshop, and lightened them all. So they're quite a bit lighter than normal, though still not quite matching the body of the New Glenn rocket, which I would like to have. But anyway, it's a start. So, let's have the rocket launch. I've called it New Hoffman, and that's because I already used New Young for a different kind of shuttle. Uh, Hoffman uh, is in reference to Jeffrey Hoffman, who uh, flew on the shuttle a few times, including on the repair mission for the Hubble Space Telescope. And he also was the professor in a lecture series from MIT that was freely available for a while and uh, in it he was having the students uh, try and redesign the shuttle to improve upon it 
and uh, he brought in a lot of guest lecturers who actually worked on the shuttle. So most of the lectures were actually from these guest lecturers who were part of the original shuttle design team. And that was good. And so I was able to watch those videos and learn all about, well, not all about the shuttle, but a lot about the shuttle from, from them. And of course, uh, redesign the shuttle is basically uh, what we're talking about here. And the benefit of this system is obviously that it's fully recoverable. New Glenn rocket will land on a barge and then the shuttle itself will attempt to land on a runway. A reminder, technically the two-stage New Glenn rocket has a payload to orbit of 45 tons. So what we're aiming for is that the structure plus payload is less than 45 tons and then it'll work out. But the structure of the shuttle includes the structure of the second stage fuel tanks. So that has to be taken into account. And basically what we've got here is a system that that works, hopefully. The Delta V here is not being read properly because it's not really got the payload figured out right. I think it's thinking that we're going to separate the payload before burning the upper stage, so it's just calculating that wrong. Well, about figuring out a way to put the New Glenn logo on the shuttle, but I think we'll have to wait on that. At some point, we'll uh, fancy it up. Maybe paint the leading edge tiles blue or something. Okay, we have separation of the first stage and ignition of the shuttle itself. A bit of pause there. In addition to the BE-4 engines, we've got Hydrolox RCS. So basically it's sort of an ACES system. And we've also got Hydrolox 1 kN thrusters as our OMS engines, a little bit underpowered. So it takes a while for them to do anything. We might want slightly larger ones or more of them, but right now basically our OMS is 4 kN. So you're going to have to be patient. These radiators are activated, but I don't think I have a heat pump in here yet. I need to get the heat pump mod so that they operate properly to do their uh, cooling business. Ah, they're also overheating for some reason. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I don't think they're going to blow up or anything. Okay, we're about to make orbit here, and there we are. Very good. Program ended. And we've got a fair amount of Delta V. Well, but we can't trust that. That's the downside. That's lying to us. We don't have 845 at all. It's been lying to us the whole time, incidentally. Um, so, yeah. I don't know if some shuffling of... Let's see. Maybe if we can shuffle it some way. Well, maybe that's closer to the truth, but I don't believe that either. Hmm. I don't know. Does uh, this show something different? Nope. Okay, but first of all, we need to shut these down anyway. And we need to start up our OMS engines. Verify that my fuel prioritization has placed all the fuel in the right place. Yes, it has. We want it on that tank, in that tank, because that's where the radiators are. Though I don't think they're doing their proper business right now, and it's annoying that they're overheating. But we're here. Um, space shuttle on top of New Glenn first stage works so far. Now we have to try and bring it back down, uh, preferably after dumping the payload. I. I mean, I'm sure we can uh, keep the payload in the bay and try and bring it back down, too, because it's right on the center of mass right now. That's where the center of mass is, so that's not going to change anything as far as center of mass is concerned. Um, we could test out uh, just seeing how it comes down with fit in, in the bay, I guess. It's only 8 tons, after all. So, okay, let's test the whole bringing cargo back down part of it, too. I forgot to check that the tank inside the bay is empty. Yes, it is. It is all done. We are 55 tons right now with an 8-ton piece of cargo. 
question is where would be a good place to do our retro burn I don't know for sure because that requires testing this will be the first test mm, generally over Australia is a good idea as far as life support uh, we've only got three crew right now and it's 34 days but so normally there would be more crew and therefore less life support on board. Hmm, I don't have uh, this an object. Oh, I do. I think a little bit more skybox dimming might be helpful. Yeah, the Milky Way is being a bit too vibrant. We'll start to retro burn at 100 degrees east or thereabouts. Okay, retrograde. There is no reaction wheel on board. None. If there was originally one on the OPT parts, I removed it. The RCS ports we're using are from KW Rocketry and I made sure they were properly heat shielded. So uh, they're acting like uh, shielded RCS ports, which they are, I mean, when you look at them. I think we can retro right now. It's gonna take a while. It's not really showing the stage time, but the stage time with just four one kilonewton thrusters. Am I missing one? Yeah, I've got one there. Where's the one that's supposed to be down here? I think some symmetry has gone wrong here. Anyway, uh, it says four of them right there, so I'll go with that. Uh, actually, they're 1.8 kilonewtons apiece, so we're talking about 7.2 kilonewtons. Not much. And the stage time is like 35 minutes. So, physical time warp. Okay, I'm gonna shut down. Well, I don't know exactly what periapsis would be the best, but let's say we go with uh, 32. Seems reasonable. Remember, space planes are not like pods, so we have to aim lower on the periapsis. So, surface, let's go to a 40 degree pitch, traditional for a shuttle. Free camera. Also, I'm going to pump the fuel back, and that's just so that we move the center of mass as far back as possible. Though, that's a lot of fuel, actually, come to think of it. Hmm. Maybe, maybe having it in this tank is okay. That might be too far back. Gonna have to look into the details as far as the center mass and center lift are concerned, depending on how much fuel we have left. But keeping it in this tank is safe, at least. If it turns out it was, it's looking like uh, we're nose heavy, I'll pump it back. The RCS sports are not particularly powerful and not as powerful as the space shuttle ports so just like the OMS engines aren't as powerful as the space shuttle OMS so we we could add more power to to the RCS and OMS systems but more power means more mass and so we would be getting to orbit with less fuel in the first place and they would guzzle fuel on the way back down too Well, with us on physical time warp, there seems to be a sort of control waggle. But I suspect that once we get really into the thicker part of the atmosphere, it'll just be maxing out the pitch and everything. Okay, we are now getting into the more severe part of the atmosphere. And at 87 kilometers, we see that it's not quite whole. Well, it's certainly maxing out the pitch, so 
I'm gonna pump the fuel back in the hope that that helps the situation. Let's see if it does. Well, you can see the pitch, and as we pump the fuel back, it's at least sort of going up, but it's not a huge difference right now. And uh, there was a little indication that it wasn't maxing out the pitch briefly, but yeah, it sometimes dips, but eventually it's gonna... Those canards aren't looking wonderful. Clearly we need larger control surfaces, but as far as uh, these are concerned, uh, their width is maxed out. So the only way to do any better is to put all moving surfaces at the back here, which is possible. But the key to uh, making sure that it doesn't use max out its uh, pitch authority is to make sure that the center of lift and center of mass are really close together with the center of mass of course in front but just barely really with shuttles they have to be much closer together than with airplanes well we caught some lift and we are going up uh, this is actually a region where normally on the trajectories that I've programmed into KOS the shuttle would also go up between 75 and 80 kilometers so this is nominal And we are approaching Baja, California, and the west coast of North America. We are probably aiming to land short of Florida, but I'm not sure. Still not doing a bad job of keeping the pitch. I mean, it's maxing it out, which is never good to see, but... We're still close to 40 degrees above the prograde vector. Well, that's some serious glow right around the Gulf of California. I'm not entirely sure about the post-processing mods uh, values right now. And of course, this is not a version of KSP that it was stated to be compatible with, so there's that too. Well, now it's only using half our pitch authority. And it's still holding roughly 40 degree pitch above the prograde vector, angle of attack. Oh wait, just as I say that, it dips down. Serious glow. It sure looks like we're going to be landing short. We're currently over the central part of Mexico. I don't know if we're actually going to be able to land in Texas though. I think we're going to overshoot that. I mean, just looking at the blue line, normally we go right past where the blue line is saying we're going to end up. Um, maybe I can hang a left turn and land at New Orleans? Something like that. But I don't think I'm going to make it all the way across the Gulf of Mexico. Still, we are uh, picking up vertical speed here, and so we're going to be bouncing up a little bit. But not for long, given the way that our velocity is being depleted. Guess I could test out whether it can roll or not. Um, let's see, do I want a negative roll? It might hurt its ability to hold the pitch, though. Yeah, it has to pitch down a bit to be able to manage the roll. But I'll give it a go. So it's doing a 20 degree roll. It's holding it pretty steady. But I don't know if that's going to be able to turn me towards land or not. Okay, we are below 60 kilometers now. Things are looking pretty good, honestly. I mean, looks like some of my experience with shuttles has paid off, because this is going pretty smoothly. Um, yeah, I mean, it held the pitch pretty well. I mean, not great, but pretty well. Still holding it. We're at 3,600 meters per second. We still need to hold the pitch up. Uh, it's not clear yet. Once we get below 2,000 meters per second, it's uh, a little bit safer to 
to stop the whole slowing down bit and maybe pitch down some more. I don't know, um, well, uh, turning is still a good idea, turning to the north, because that's where Cape Canaveral is. So our current path is southward because we're trying to come back after just one orbit. There's the cross-range ability that people talk about with shuttles, uh, so we don't have as much cross-range as a shuttle does, and we're not doing it as severely as a shuttle would if it wanted to use its cross-range, but... We're probably doing enough taking a look at our path. I think we could probably, if we can maintain enough lift, we can probably get to Cape Canaveral again. Yeah, there's a chance. I still feel like we're going to end up in the Gulf of Mexico or like in Tampa or something. Well, now I have to hope that we've got enough wing to make a safe landing, right? Somewhere. I mean, I don't know if we're going to get back to a runway, but somewhere we need to be able to get enough lift so that we can slow down. And the lifting body stuff has to work out for us. I'm still not feeling like we're going to make it all the way to the KSC, but I would be very happy if we could just set down on land somewhere, preferably flat. Florida is mostly flat. There are some inconvenient lakes though, lots of in inconvenient lakes. But I don't think all of those tiny little lakes are rendered in real solar systems, so we're in luck there. Well, at this point, I might as well dump the remaining fuel by just burning the OMS engines. It's going to take us a while to use those to get rid of the fuel anyway. Okay, I am going to have to pitch down eventually, because otherwise we're going to stall. I'm going to have Smart ASS start that out. It's already not able to hold the 40 degree pitch, but that's alright. At this stage, it wasn't supposed to. It's doing a pretty good job. Okay, then just as I say that, it starts oscillating. Okay, hold on. Let's use fly-by-wire here. This city in front of us is Orlando. Which is the correct city to be flying over at this juncture. But it's really hazy, so I can't really see the KSC runways. Oh, we need to pitch down. I mean, presumably that's the Cape Canaveral area right in front of us, but I don't think with the way I'm losing speed here that I'm going to get the, all the way over there. Guess I can try using the OMS engines a little bit more. They're not really speeding me up at all. And not very efficient at this altitude either. Nah, let's forget that. I mean... This is pretty darn good so far, anyway. To get this close is pretty darn good. It's annoying though, I can sort of see the runway. Guess I'll just aim for it and we'll see whether I've got enough glide ability here. Actually, it's not looking too bad, to be honest. That's amazing? Really? I think I actually need to slow down. Good thing I packed uh, air brakes. I really would rather land on the shuttle landing facility runway though. I don't trust this one very much. 
I was not expecting to come back, so I don't care if I crash right now. I'm going pretty fast. Uh, this is already good. Come on, get down, though. Oh, 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 that doesn't look good, that doesn't look good. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> well, whatever. Just slow down eventually. Oh, it's getting, it's getting, it's doing that thing. Yeah. I don't care. That was pretty darn good. <laughs> I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there you have it. First test of the new Hoffman space shuttle system. Pretty darn good, I say. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.